Good day, everyone across North America. This is John Garmendi with Sony's Professional Solutions of America, welcoming you back to a special edition in our series of ongoing Tech Tuesday AV Solutions webinars. These webinars were started in response to the COVID crisis so that our customers, resellers, integrators, and consultants can stay informed and up to date on Sony's latest products and solutions. In today's webinar, we'll be joined by our new partners at TSI Touch to learn about an integrated one box infrared touch solution from Sony and TSI. And we'll find out how these touch solutions together with our Pro Bravia displays provide superior visual performance and are well suited for demanding digital signage environments. A few items of housekeeping, as in previous webinars, there'll be an opportunity for Q&A. So please submit your questions via the, the in-event meeting question panel. I'll post links to information referred to during the webinar in the chat panel. And we'll also post a link to our YouTube playlist where you can view all of our archived Tech Tuesday webinars. Joining me today will be Chris Martell, Director of Engineering for TSI Touch, and Anthony Cianferrano, Product Manager for our Pro Bravia product line. I'll turn it over to Anthony now and join you all back here for Q&A. Hello, everybody. I'm Anthony Sanfreno, and I will talk a little bit about our BZ series displays and our lineup, and then uh, we'll turn it over to Chris for his presentation. So for the display market that we see as of today, um, we see a couple trends. The large size segment is growing, and uh, the B2B mid-range segment also growing. And then the uh, interactivity and digital signage and collaboration applications is becoming a requirement. Um, people want to interact with the content. And that uh, is what the touch overlay, um, touch solution from TSI Touch will provide with our Bravia displays. So to address this uh, expansion, in, in uh, the market um, for the large size, we have introduced the 100 inch size that'll start shipping. It's actually starting to ship now and a 32 inch, which will start shipping in the fall. So we're addressing both the large size and the smaller size entry level uh, market. This slide you, you read from the bottom up, um, our, our lineup includes uh, tuner models, which is the FWD series. Um, we, with the 32 inch, we've introduced the entry line of the BZ30J and the mid range series, which is the BZ35F, the BZ40H, and the new 100 inch BZ40J. Um, with all those models and the ability of using the pro mode for special configurations, um, extended software through our software partners and hardware partners is where TSI Touch comes into play, offering of accessories and our SIs, our integration partners, we're able to introduce, you know, address the corporate retail education and hotel uh, hospitality segments. So other brands have uh, several different series in their lineup. We have our core series and with these, different uh, approaches we can address all the all those different vertical segments. So let's take a look at our current lineup. This is kind of a, a little bit of a look back and a look forward. Um, we introduced the dedicated B2B models in 2018 um, and that consisted of the six models that you see the 43, 49 and then the 55 through 85. Um, just last August we refreshed the uh, 55 through 85 with the BZ40H series. The BZ35 is still in our lineup for a while, um, but just uh, a couple months ago, we introduced the 32 inch and the 40, 40 J 100 inch. So as we move forward in the future, there's gonna be other additions. And uh, June 8th, we're gonna make an announcement about some other news in our lineup. And so keep your eye out for that as we approach uh, June 8th.
the uh, tuner series. Um, last year we had the X800H series. This year we've um, moved to the X81CH models. And you can see there's the four sizes there, 55, 65, 75, and 85. And it's actually the same spec as the X800H, so nothing really changed. There's some cosmetic difference with the table stand feet. But other than that, it's the same spec um, as the X800H. So the BZ40H is our core B2B models. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more about that. So the, the highlight points with these models are, are the picture quality. We're, we're always very proud of our picture quality. Um, it's probably the best in the industry, if, if not one of the best. Um, our design is intended for B2B use. So we, we've uh, used aluminum uh, chassis and uh, bezels and the uh, interfaces on the side and the Sony logos on the side. And so a lot of things are done to tailor it for the B2B market. And then the functionality in terms of performance, it's built on uh, SOC Android TV platform. Um, as I mentioned before, we incorporate the pro mode for custom configurations. We use both RS-232 and the very robust IP control. And we also have the um, mirroring capability with both Chromecast built in and AirPlay 2. So in terms of the picture quality, um, the, all of our models incorporate, except for the 100 inch, incorporate the 4K HDR processor X1. Um, it's a very sophisticated picture processor that um, analyzes the picture and reproduces it for the best contrast, clarity, and um, color reproduction. The other thing that we have incorporated in our line is the full array LED backlight system. Um, this allows us to utilize the local dimming technology that uh, dims the backlight in areas of the scene that require dark and highlight and increases the backlight in the areas of the scene that are bright. So it's very good for inner frame contrast and HDR reproduction. This is kind of the spec sheet of the BZ40H. And these are why we use this model with the, the TSI Touch. We recommended these models with TSI Touch because of the, for one, they're going to be in the market for a couple of years. So we want longevity in our product. Um, they're also the bright, brightest in our lineup at 620 candelas per meter and 850 nits peak. Um, they are also 24 seven support as well as portrait and tilt installation. So those are kind of the key core features that we would want to have in a digital signage application with uh, touch interactivity, such as a kiosk or, or other types of uh, touch applications that Chris will get into. And then I already touched on the uh, cosmetic design. Um, when the TSI touch solution is applied, um, it's gonna change the bezel a little bit, but uh, as far as the rear uh, access, not the rear access, but the side access of the interface, that will remain the same. The bezel is flat, so we don't have to worry about any kind of IR receiver or protrusion or anything like that. It was in our previous models. And then we use a reinforced structure. Um, in the aluminum bezel and the aluminum cap. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Chris from TSI Touch, and he's going to go through their uh, technology and applications and how they use their solution with our models. Thank you very much, Anthony. <clears throat> so little bit of our agenda here. We're going to cover um, kind of who TSI is and what we do, a brief history of touch, product overview, what specifically we're offering uh, when combined with the Sony solution and where it fits in the world, and some other solutions that uh, we can provide. So a little bit of who I am. Uh, I'm the director of engineering for TSI Touch. I've been in the industry since 1999. And I've worked on pretty much any 
type of touch application you can think of, from pizza ordering terminals to missile intercept systems, sonar trainers, uh, ultrasound equipment, pretty much a little bit of everything. Um, currently live a little bit west of Boston with a whole menagerie of, uh, of critters in the house um, and spend most of my time, free time, mentoring a first robotics team in addition to playing paintball and uh, enjoying all the different breweries in the area. So TSI Touch was founded in 1989 as part of a defense contractor. In 2011, we were spun off into our own independent company. We are entirely employee owned through an ESOP, Employee Stock Ownership Program. Um, all in all, we have decades of collective experience in, in, in display technology and making things work and installation and, and pretty much any kind of support structure you can think of that you need for a commercial installation. We specialize in large format video wall um, and interactive solutions. We, our biggest successes come from great customer relationships. We are not a, we recognize that the industry is not one size fits all and there are gonna be customizations needed. Um, there will be challenges to overcome, but we're dedicated to providing the right solution for each application, knowing that just because it's the right solution for somebody else doesn't make it the right solution for your particular application. We have great relationships with leading display manufacturers and different providers of touch technology, as well as other ecosystem partners. And we pretty much bring a solution together that's gonna to meet or exceed the needs of the end user. So we provide touch solutions and protective solutions for commercial displays, much like Sony's product line. Um, beyond that, we can offer different derivatives of cover glass, which I'll get into a little bit during our presentation. But ultimately, our goal is to provide the right solution to meet the needs of the installation. We are located about an hour southeast of Pittsburgh in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Um, our 40,000 square foot facility is armed with a manufacturing line, clean rooms, robotics, engineering, service support, accounting, and warehousing. Pretty much anything you need to make the business run is all located at our headquarters. In addition to transforming standard displays and interactive solutions, we can also offer product kitting and staging, life cycle management, custom design and engineering, as well as installation support for our solutions. Everything from simple bezels to custom colors and logos, full surrounds, and even My Little Pony display shelves, which our president Gary Mundrake um, really, really enjoys My Little Pony figures. And we uh, developed a shelf so we can display them in his office proudly. A little bit of history of touchscreens. Um, in the late 1960s, a gentleman by the name of E.A. Johnson at the Royal Radar Establishment Malvern, UK, developed and published a paper on how to make a capacitive type touchscreen useful for air traffic control. In the 1970s, a touch center was developed by uh, Dr. Sam Hurst, who was the founder of ELOGRAPH while he was an instructor at the University of Kentucky. This was not a transparent sensor as we know it today, but it was a resistive type touchscreen and a significant milestone in touchscreen technology. A little bit later in the 1974, he developed a, another um, a transparent resistive touchscreen, which became the foundation for just about every common touchscreen from that point on. Uh, resistive touchscreens have a couple of conductive layers and when you compress those layers together you get a touch function it's great for single point touch and it's great for a very inexpensive touchscreen solution on small format displays um, as you get larger it just doesn't quite work as well and that's where some other touch technologies came into the picture in the late 70s uh, siemens financed an effort by electrographic elo graphics rather to produced the first curved glass touch sensor interface, which became the first device to have the name touchscreen attached to it. In 1994, the company officially changed its name from ELO Graphics to ELO Touch Systems. In the 1980s, Hewlett Packard introduced the first home computer with a touchscreen, the HP 150. This used a grid of infrared beams across the front surface of the monitor, which detected finger movements. In the 90s came about the birth of smartphones. where Apple introduced the Newton PDA, which was the first um, personal digital assistant equipped with a handwriting recognition function, and IBM released the first smartphone known as Simon. 
this had the capability of doing a having a touch screen which provided not only calendar and notepad and, and fax functions but also a touch screen interface that allowed the user to dial phone numbers in 1996 palm introduced the palm pilot which of course became the foundation for almost every smartphone that we know in 2002 Microsoft introduced the Windows XP Tablet Edition, which um, some of us may remember, actually was probably one of the first instances that a lot of us had for exposure to touchscreen interfaces. Apple, of course, in 2007, introduced the pinnacle of the smartphone technology, what kind of kicked everything off, and that was the iPhone. iPhone later became the iPod, iPad, and i everything, and that's pretty much where the touchscreen became the ubiquitous part of our of our existence. The touch market has rapidly changed over the last decade. Um, some of these changes include things like human interface device compliance, which makes most of our touchscreens uh, plug and play, it eliminated the need for drivers by and large, and opened up a wide array of operating systems that traditionally would have been very difficult to get touch working with. Uh, advances in touch controller technology have brought us from a single point of touch to 100 points and more in just a few short years. And that user interface and experience, as touch has become more and more a part of our everyday lives, the programmers and designers and developers have cre crafted these finely tuned interfaces to make even the most boring tasks simple but intuitive and actually fun in some cases. And the scale of touch, um, originally touch was limited to very small sizes, uh, but has actually grown to now where we can do interactive walls that are 500 inches in diagonal measure and more. So uh, as I'm sure we're all aware, uh, at the end of 2019, this thing called COVID started sweeping across the globe and it wasn't fully identified, of course, until 2020. As it was a new virus, it was a little problematic for uh, the authorities and in, in our health industries and, and government oversight to come up with um, to come up with best guidances on how to um, prevent the spread of the disease. And initially, hard surfaces like touchscreens were kind of given a bad name as they were seen to be easily vectors for the disease to be transmitted. Um, as though it was initial guidance, it did in fact change later on. Um, and that's kind of where we are today with a push to swing public perception back in favor of touchscreens. They have now been recognized to be a very minimal factor. In fact, human to human transmission is the most likely vector. So attempts to replicate that touch interactive experience that we all know and love with things like gesture control um, really haven't taken off all that well because there's nothing that's more intuitive than simply reaching your finger up and touching the thing that you want to work with. Uh, people don't want to have to learn all new gestures and movements to interact with something in public because as fun as it may look in the movies, it looks a little silly to be waving your hands around wildly at, a, at an airport when you're trying to interact with a flight monitor. Our solution for Sony Bravia Professional Displays is based off of an, a spread type pulsed IR technology. Like nearly all IR or infrared solutions, this uses two rails. One rail, two of the rails are transmitters, two of the rails are receivers. The transmitters are highlighted in red on this uh, photograph, and the receivers are highlighted in green. The spread type IR utilizes a wide angle lens on the emitters and a condenser lens on the detectors. Each emitter, when it's turned on for a fraction of a second, strikes multiple detectors. When you touch the screen, that area of, of beam interruption is interpreted by the controller to determine where your touch event is happening. By pulsing the transmitter, the controller chip can then build a picture of what's going on the, on the screen by analyzing the pattern of uh, interrupted light. Our touch has been verified to work with the integrated Android system in the Sony display as well with nearly any external PC or player we commonly found in the market today. Um, we can support up to 10 points of simultaneous touch. The substrate is constructed with anti-glare tempered glass, which provides best-in-class durability and reducing glare from external sources. We can expect roughly a 10% reduction in brightness from the panel due to the use of this glass. The bezel is made from cold rolled steel, which provides strength and durability and support to the display. And the bezel is then powder coated with a polymer that is baked on to form a durable scratch-resistant finish. 
The reason we use um, tempered glass versus chemically strengthened or any other type of glass is that if tempered glass breaks and no matter how strong glass is or how strong it's made, if somebody is dedicated, they will find a way to break it. If it does break, much like the side windows in your car, it breaks into tiny little pebbles. It does not break into large, sharp shards that can uh, potentially harm anybody. So pebbles versus shards, that's really the main reason that we do it. The benefit of using anti-glare glass is that it, it is a low reflection, high resolution with superior durability. We can do different things with that glass. We can get into low sparkle grade specific applications if needed. It can be heat tempered, which is what we do, um, laminated or chemically strengthened, which are things that we tend to avoid. And it tends not to become oily due to, um, or rather become highly reflective due to oily fingerprints. So when you're touching the screen, it actually provides a nice glide. Um, it, it's that if your glass is too smooth, it doesn't provide a very good tactile feedback. Your finger tends to stick to it a little bit where with this um, anti-glare coating that we do, you can actually glide your finger across that touch surface much more readily. So these are the overall solutions for our Sony Bravia Professional Series displays. This is the 55 inch solution. It's pretty simple, straightforward. IR interactive touchscreen installed on the 55 inch display with 10 point um, IR technology, anti-glare glass and a custom black bezel. We do add a little bit of, um, of width, height and depth to the display um, and obviously increase the overall weight just a little bit. This is the 65 inch, very similar specifications. Obviously the dimensions are a little bit different as is the weight. And the 75 inch. These are the sizes that we've um, standardized on today. Uh, we are, of course, going to be looking at the other sizes that Sony's bringing to market and figuring out which uh, which sizes make the best for uh, make the best sense for providing a interactive solution for as the market demands. The spread type IR tends to be the most cost effective technology for the majority of large format touch applications. And it's not just limited to traditional signage applications. We can do things like um, conference rooms, wayfinding, higher education, collaboration spaces, pretty much any place you can think of to put a large format interactive display, spread type IR is gonna make the most sense from a cost and performance perspective. And we bring the best solution to every project. We know that not every solution is ever one size fits all. Uh, we'll work with our suppliers and ecosystem partners to build out a cohesive solution of displays, mounts, touch solutions, enclosures, and more, often even color matched to the decor of the final installation. So these are a couple of examples. We did a video conferencing solution that actually has the webcam baked into an oversized bezel. And then again, a simple interactive kiosk. few of the other solutions that we've done for partners using, you know, leveraging our ecosystem, um, large format touch uh, interactive solutions for a ballpark, a uh, obviously a, a sports a sports equipment dealer, and just different things that we can do pretty easily using, utilizing our ecosystem partners. And that brings us to the Q&A. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Chris. Uh, we do have a couple of questions. Um, let's see. Uh, the first one here is from Ralph. Uh, he asks, does the screen need calibration for touch? Typically speaking, you do need to calibrate the touch screen the first time around. But once that's done, that calibration should remain drift free um, unless you do something like uh, drastically change the resolution of the screen, in which case you may need to recalibrate to that existing resolution. Great. Um, Anthony, a question from Linda. Uh, she asks about the warranty. So how, how does the warranty work? She knows that there's a there's a three year warranty on the Sony Pro Bravia. Um, does that, does that warranty stay intact once it becomes a, a, a package product along with the TSI yes. Um, panel? Yes. Okay, great. The answer is warranty. yes. Very good. Thank you, Anthony. Um, Chris, a question from Marshall, um, asks about cleaning of the, of, of, of the panel. So our recommendation for cleaning of the panel is pretty straightforward. Um, it's spray a non-caustic cleaner onto a cloth and then 
simply wipe the screen. Um, we at TSI have um, our own screen cleaners, but basically any common um, cleaner will, will do the trick. Um, the, the goal though is not to have so much cleaner applied that it's running down into the screen because that can damage the electronics. We just want to spray a small amount on the cloth and then wipe clean. Great. Uh, Chris, uh, another question from you, a uh, question from David. He says here, a lot of end users are confused about touch versus multipoint touch. Um, can you can you elaborate on, on that as well as talk a little bit about the latest functionality of multipoint? Sure. So with the original types of touch, you had a single point of touch where you could touch the screen and it would emulate basically a mouse click. It would do one thing and one thing only. With multi-touch, you're able to do gestures like uh, pinch to zoom or pinch to, uh, to zoom into a picture or to expand or to do a twist to rotate a picture. You're able to do all these different gestures that you basically couldn't do with a single point of touch. There are always new gestures that are being introduced, um, but the traditional ones that we all know from our smartphones are to, you know, the pinch to zoom. Um, some operating systems support other gestures, like a three finger swipe is to advance to the next page or a swipe with a certain number of digits from the left or from the right is to expand or go forward or go back in a, in a web page. So uh, a lot of those gestures are constantly evolving and constantly expanding and will depend on the operating system or the driving hardware used in your touch solution. Great, Chris. Um, we have a follow-up question. Uh, we have a follow-up question from David. Um, he asks, can you assign just part of the screen area to touch and not other areas? He's thinking about um, uh, some potential ADA applications where you need the touch function near the bottom of the screen and not the top. So with the IR type technology, it's kind of an all or nothing scenario as far as the touchscreen itself is concerned. However, you can in your software restrict the touch interactivity depending on what software you're using for your signage or your uh, you know, wayfinding type application. You can restrict the touch to really only work within a certain area if that's the zone that you've designated as interactive. Thanks, Chris. Um have another uh, a question from uh, from another Chris and Chris asks do you have a solution that addresses multiple touch screens on a single PC and then he says here in parentheses uh, not a video wall but discrete displays there are multiple ways to get there from here um, it's really going to be dependent on what the individual application is uh, meaning what type of software that you're running on the on the PC. Um, there are different driver instances or different uh, bits of packages of software that can be used to allow for multiple sensors to be interactive at the same time. We can just simply plug them in and they'll work, but the way that Windows by default treats a touchscreen is the first instance of touch, whether that's on, say, screen one or screen two, that will always be the primary interactivity. Um, and it's not until you can use other bits of software to tell the computer that I want basically the same thing to happen regardless of what um, screen is being interacted with. Okay, great. And yet another, uh, another Chris, this is a Christopher. Um, he asks, is the touch system powered via the Sony display or is there an additional power supply and connection required? Uh, the answer is potentially yes. Um, the screen can be powered by the Sony display, the touch sensor can, because it is a simple USB connection. So if you're connecting to the onboard Sony Android player, obviously it will be powered by the Sony uh, system at that point. However, it does not require an external AC or DC power supply. It is simply powered over USB. All right, the next question comes from Tina. This is about logistics. Um, can you comment uh, with respect to lead times? 
So if we have the components in stock um, at a worst case scenario, you're looking at the lead at a lead time of um, you know three to five days, and that's just depending on what our production schedule is looking like. If the components are not in stock, it's going to be more in the four to six week time frame. Okay, and a question from Thomas asks: Is the power coat powder coat? Sorry finish durable yeah the uh the powder coat is quite durable it's a polymer that's baked on and um, it's going to provide a high degree of uh, protection against let's call it casual uh casual wear and tear of course as with anything if somebody's determined you will be able to compromise the powder coat but by and large it's a very durable surface and a follow-up question um how about the tempered glass itself the durability. So the tempered glass itself is actually made to take quite a bit of impact. Um, the strength of it uh, is if anybody's ever actually watched um, somebody try to break, say, the side window of a car as they did on uh, Mythbusters or similar shows, it's very hard to do. Um, it's not until you find a way to impart a heck of a lot of force in a very, very small area that you'll be able to uh, compromise that glass. So tempered glass is a very durable solution. Okay, and um, this one's for Anthony. Um, questions regarding future sizes and uh, when, when will new sizes be available? Well, the 32 inch will be shipping in near the end of summer in the early fall. And the 100 inch is gonna start shipping now. Um, beyond those sizes, there's nothing else on the roadmap. So um, I'm not sure what uh, what other sizes are, are being asked about. But uh, 100 will be our largest, 32 inch will be our smallest, and then we'll have the sizes in between, which are 43, 50, um, currently 49, but it'll migrate to a 50, 55, 65, 75, and 85. Okay, and another question from Rodrigo, uh, asking about where where can I see this? Is there are, are there demo products available? How do I how do I see one? How do I test one? And uh, I, I don't know if you want to handle that, Anthony or or Chris. Yeah, I can I can take it from the Sony side. Um, we will put uh, a couple demo units into our demo pool. So that's in process right now being worked on. And uh, if you want to demo the unit, get in touch with one of our account managers and they can arrange arrange that. Okay, great. Um, just checking for any last minute questions. Uh, I do not see any. So with that, we will, uh, we will say thanks to everyone who joined us today. Um, we, we truly appreciate you uh, spending some time, especially um, first day after a long weekend and a short week. We know your time is valuable and uh, we always uh, wanna let you know how appreciative we are. As always, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, send us any comments or suggestions on the Tech Tuesday presentations or topics that you'd like to see covered in, in the future. And a reminder to please join us in two weeks on June 15th for another in our series of RV on AV panel discussions with our Vice President of Sony B2B Solutions Division, Rich Ventura. He'll be joined by leading voices in the digital signage industry to discuss what's new and what's next in digital signage. And with that, I wish everyone a uh, profitable week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and look forward to speaking with you in two weeks. Thanks, everyone.